Hi, welcome to another lesson. I've gotten another good question from Eddie Stream. He's saying a lot of developers use this dot camera or something like that. Why do they use it? Is it the same as the window in the last video? I stuck a mesh on the window so that we could debug it. So we're going to look at why it's useful. The whole topic is called encapsulation. We're going to use classes to solve it, but really what it does is it happens to be that in 3.js, it makes it much easier to debug your code and it allows you to separate your code more easily. There's an awful lot more involved, but I'm going to try and keep it really simple because this topic is huge. But I think if I show you, you'll see, ah, that's neater. You'll start to use it and it'll start to make more sense. So let's have a look at what we're doing here. So we have a simple HTML file with a H1, a canvas called red box that's going to hold our 3JS canvas and a script, script.js. Let's have a look there. So this is a pretty straightforward little file, importing three, declaring some variables, and running an init function that sets up the renderer and canvas and scene and our mesh, and then the animator function that just animates over it all. So same as last time, we've left in window.mesh here. So if I say mesh, I'm able to debug this. So it's the same as where we were. What's the problem here? So the problem is we've got an awful lot of variables up here and they're open, they're in the main context. If we wanted to have a second canvas, let's add in a green box. Imagine we wanted to duplicate some of our code and we wanted to have a slightly different sketch going on. We wanted green box. How would we go about that? One thing we might do is copy and paste the code again. But we're going to get the conflict. Let's try that. So let's even just say script JS is for the red box. We're going to have a green.js with the green box. So we've got green box as the ID here. Let's pop that in. We're going to change the color to green. Everything's going to be wonderful. Nothing worked because you need to actually run scripts <laughs> to get them to work. So this is weird. A green box is working, but a red box is broken. Why is that? And that is because we are putting that mesh on the window. So let's not do that. Let's just do it as a let in green box. And we're getting an issue. Why is that? Again, because we need to declare it at the top. So let's say mesh. Check that over here. Now green box is working. But now we can't debug green box where we need to call it something else if we wanted to look at it because Redbox's mesh is still on the window. So how do we get Greenbox's mesh on the window? Okay, so let's not call it mesh. We'd have to call it like window.green mesh. So that's amazingly, scene is still picking up that mesh off the window from Redbox, but this should work. And we also need to animate it. So see how messy that is. And what if we have 10 boxes in 10 different canvases? Do we have to start renaming things because they're clashing with each other? And you know, we might call something green box here. But then what if we have another page and there's three different shades of green? Then we, then we can't share the code because we have to rename it in every different page. It's a nightmare. So let's try and make it more simple. Let's get rid of green box. Add the script actually, and just this for a second. Let's get our red box working using this. So using encapsulation. 
So what I'm going to do is copy the script and let's call it with this. And we need to bring that in. So we're going to, oops, load this in a slightly different way. We're going to use classes. We're going to use modern techniques. So we're going to have a script. It's going to be a type of module. And we're going to import our whole app as a sketch. I like to call them sketch. Oops. And then just so we can see what's going on, we're just going to console log the sketch. So we haven't made this yet. We just got that set up there. So that's why it's given here. With this, .js doesn't provide an export. Cool. So we're going to use this export, this sketch we're going to make, this class, and it's going to have everything we need to know about that one sketch that one 3JS app, and then every time we run it, it's going to keep all those variables together, which is going to let us expose more without having naming conflicts or anything. It's going to let us dig much deeper into three, much more neatly. Cool. So in the short term, I'm going to count out everything and just get that class go. So we're going to get a class called sketch. Every class needs a constructor, but we're going to ask Copilot to calm down for a second and just console log hello. And we need to export that class. That's what it's giving out about there. It does not provide a named export default. So we're going to say export default sketch. It's back here. When it's imported, it's importing this sketch. And there we can see a little console log down below. So we're not getting hello, which is strange. Ah, because we haven't assigned it to anything. We're going to say const redbox is equal to a new sketch. Cool. So there we go. That hello coming through from the constructor. Excellent. So this constructor is where we would have had these variables out in the open. So now let's bring them in to the constructor and keep them within our sketch. And to assign something to the sketch, to the class, you use this. So it's where all the this dots come from. Some people even have a this dot song. And this isn't doing much yet, but if we console log Redbox, here's where it gets really interesting. So we haven't done anything on the window. We haven't done anything too weird with the variables in as far as classes go. But when we console log the sketch, if we look at the prototype, Oh, I would have assumed we would see these on it. Do we need to set them to something? There we go. Yeah, they need to be set to something. So you can see camera is true. Now, we wouldn't usually do it like this. I'm going to do it nicer in a second. But just to show you, we can now log this sketch and start seeing all these details. So we're seeing more than we saw before, even though we haven't done anything with 3JS yet. So this is where it starts to help the debugging. Let's get some better examples going. So we're going to bring in our functions again. So the init function and the animate function. And in a class, you don't need to declare a function. So they should be happy enough there. And we're going to bring the init and animate into the constructor. You don't need to cancel all of that anymore. And we're going to call them. And we've got a problem because we don't know what init is. 
because we haven't put it in our sketch. We haven't declared where it is relative to this. So because it's in the root, you can see it's in the same line as the constructor. It's just a this.init and a this.animate. So we're hitting another problem because we've taken it from the simpler way of doing three, where it doesn't know what any of these things are called anymore. It doesn't know what a scene is, it doesn't know what a renderer is. And here is where we do all the this dot stuff. So let's start looking for all the instances of scene. I think there's another one down here. And say this dot. Lovely. Now it's wondering about the renderer. So let's get all of those. And there's another one down here. This dot. And now it's wondering about the camera. Those. And there's another one down here. This dot. Cool. Ah. So all of our normal kind of global variables are working. But now it's not sure where animate is, because we've got another just animate here, so we can say this dot. Now this gets interesting. Doesn't know what animate is again. But it actually does the first time. If I console.log animate. Actually, let's console.log this. You see there's sketch. So the first time when we call this.animate, the context is the sketch. Animate knows what to do, calls this.animate. But now because of encapsulation, the context is this.animate. So we need to reset it back to the sketch every time by just finding the original this. I'm flying over that. Trust me. <laughs> it took me a long while to understand it. To be honest, do I fully understand it? I don't know. But that is how you get the animate function to work and you should be going again. Cool. And now if we look at our sketch when we console log red box down here, we're getting the camera and all the functionality to do with it, the renderer. So we could say, ah, so here is where we could just put on the window the red box. Oops, if I do it properly. Again, this isn't, you never really want to put stuff on the window, but this is just to show you how we can get into it. So when I look at Redbox, I'm getting that sketch class with everything on it. I can see the init, I can see the constructor, I can see the animate. I've got everything that I need there. So I could say uh, redbox.camera position y and have a look, so it's at 0.7. So what if we change that to 1.2? So you see, we're starting to get control of the camera and we never really, we didn't have to do anything to get that. We just get it for free. Cool. So we've got better information in the console about our sketch, about our red box. What about what we were saying about the green box? So this is the other benefit. That first benefit is being able to investigate, to be able to look at the scene. You can see the children. So there's just one, it's the mesh. We're able to access all of that. So the other benefit then is reusing the code. And to do this, we need to split the code a little bit to be able to reuse it. So what we're gonna say is we want another sketch. This one's gonna be green box. And we're going to console log that as well. So that's not doing much. It's all actually still running here. So why, what's, what's the use? What's cool is we can pass in variables. So if I pass in red here and green here, we can get those in the constructor as a color. And we could say this.color equals that color that's coming in. 
So now when I look at these, see, color red, color green. Interesting. So maybe I can, when we're getting the ID, say this.color box. Cool. So we're getting our two boxes. We want to change the color here. Let's see. This.color. We're getting that problem again with the mesh, which we don't like. So all we need to do is say this.mesh up here and a little bit of a thissing. And now we've got both working, which we didn't really get before. We can also inspect them down here. So here's our mesh. We could even go in and see the material. We can see the color coming through. So we're getting a huge amount of detail and no conflicts. They're both running. So let's remind ourselves again, we're pulling in sketch. We're creating a new sketch with red and a new sketch with green. So they're two different contexts now. So there's no clash in all that information. It's really nice and neat, but we need to separate out the files again. So, sorry, actually, so this works perfectly. We've got one file running both sketches. We're doing great, but we can make it neater because this is a lot to take on. You can imagine if we've got a huge project, thousands of lines, we don't want it to look like this. So we could separate some things out. Let's make some components. What just we're doing? I did that. So we're going to make a scene component. Let's just say components. Scene.js. And to do that, we're going to remove the scene from here and make it in here with another class. So we're going to say class scene. Structure. And we're actually just going to return a new scene. But if you wanted to do an awful lot more stuff with your scene, there's fog and things like that. You could do it all in here and keep that nice and neat and reuse that scene file then. So let's do a little export of that default scene. I'm going to import it here. Import scene. Uh, what would that be? It's scene. And now up here, we can just say our scene is a new scene. And that should just work. Aha, except three is not defined. So it's defined here in this file, but it's not defined in this file. So let's add it in. Everything's working. Lovely stuff. So what else do we want to do? Let's pluck out the renderer. And we're going to make that a class. And then I just fly through this as I've been talking a while now. And I hope you're getting the basics of it. So we're going to make another class. We're going to have it as a renderer. Have a constructor, because we have to. And we're going to bring all of these in. And we're just going to return the renderer. And then back in here, yeah, render. I'm going to say that our render is a new render. Let's 
So we didn't export it. I think Copilot is giving away a little trick I was going to try and get to, or a trick, a something we need to look out for. Canvas is not defined. So if you see here, you've got canvas. What is that? That's a variable we're setting up here. So can we get that? We do that in the renderer. Cool. So now width isn't defined. What is width? We probably don't know what you're doing for width. Ha, ah, because there's no color. So that's not the best way to do that. Let's bring that back in. And say instead. So but the problem we're having here is we're trying to find the DOM element to show our sketching. So we're going to say this.canvas is go and get that thing. And we're going to pass that variable to our renderer. So we're going to say canvas, this canvas, take it to canvas, and then wherever we are using it, we need to say this canvas. And we're in business. And see what this is slowly doing. It's making this file shorter and easier to read. Let's do the camera. So as we're learning by now, we need to grab 3JS. That's camera. That's probably not right. Now we're gonna need a constrictor. And we're gonna need to export the camera. Then we can grab everything to do with the camera. And then return the camera. And then we should be able to just say this new camera. Okay. Camera is not defined. There's not an instance of three dot camera. What is happening there? Step camera. So this is happening in press animation frame, this dot camera. Maybe this is an issue with the renderer still. Should be okay. Uh, is it just the order? No. Strange. So just let's stop animating. Say the blog start camera. Here's a camera. It looks empty though. Mm. Hmm. Very strange. Looks like I've spelled it correctly.
that looks strange. Aha, so what are we doing wrong? It looks like this isn't initializing. It's where I'm starting to lose all meaning. Strange. Let's so that we're clear on what we're seeing in the console. Let me look here. So camera is returning. The constructor is seeing the camera, but we should have this running first, but we're not constructor. There we go. That looks better. All of that over just a little typo. So let's get rid of those. Bring the animate back in. Lovely. Then if we bring back in our boxes. Green and red, both very happy. Lovely stuff. So we're really pulling stuff back here. And now we're gonna hit another little interesting bit. So this is the last piece I'm gonna show you when we try and export the mesh and make it a class. So let's call it like mover box. Maybe we wanna have 10 of these and maybe we want them to be different sizes and different colors. So let's do as we have been doing and export this make a class of mover box. Hope I spelled that right this time. We're going to need to bring in 3JS. Export mover box and we're going to need to return. This dash. Mover box from components mover box. Thank you. And we're going to say their mesh is a new mover box. So we're going to have some problems here cannot read properties of undefined reading add. So that's the this.scene. So the box doesn't know what the scene is, so it doesn't know how to add itself to the box. So we can give it a little helping hand. We can give it the scene here. So we can say scene, this.scene equals scene. We've got a bit of progress, but we've got a problem with the material. This stuff color isn't coming through. So maybe we need to pass that through as well. Start. And then we could say color. And I see this is what we want to avoid because we're starting to create a lot of variables, a lot of human error, a lot of things we need to think about. It works. But imagine we had 20 other things we wanted to change the height, the width, the speed, the rotation. We don't want to have a whole lot of variables building up in our constructor like that. So what I like to do is actually just pass this, which is the sketch. If we count this out now and just console.log. So we're going to send through the whole sketch. That's what this refers to. Let me go back. So in the sketch, this go. In the sketch, this refers to the sketch. So if I console.log sketch here, and we might get a few other errors. Let's stop it animating for a second. And 
got too many other console logs going on. But it's one of these sketches. As you can see, it comes in red, red. Let's quiet this one down over here. And make sure that this is right. I'm going to say move box. Yeah, so you can see the mover box brings in the sketch. So we can say this dot sketch. So now we always have a reference to the parent sketch. So when we're trying to do our little bit of snazziness down here, we can say this dot sketch dot scene. Uh, and then we can say this dot sketch dot color. And animate again. And it still works. And all that's coming through without having to pass a million variables. We just have to pass the sketch. And now look what this has done. We don't really need the init function anymore. We just need to animate. We don't even need three in our sketch. Look how simple it's gotten. But we're not finished. We're animating the mesh here in the animate function, but we want to keep everything together in the mover box. So how can we work with that? I've covered animating before, so I'm gonna just jump through this. Um, I'll pop up the video, but I have a video on how to do inline animations. But a quick little way around it would be to say this dot animation functions is an array. We're going to pull the actual animation we want to do out and say animation is doing that to the mesh and now we're going to say so we've just declared this to animation functions so every time we want to animate something we're going to throw its animation function into this array which is part of the sketch so we're going to say this dot sketch dot animation functions push oops this dot animation and look vs code is brilliant it's already binding the this for us so that whenever we're working on it this will refer to our mover box which we want so it's going to find ah, we just need to declare this earlier Cool, so we've got no motion because we're not doing anything yet. So we're just going to say this dot animation functions for each run the function. Lovely. So now the animate has absolutely no specific code in it, as in specific about a scene or a um, mesh. So that we can nearly forget about now. Neither does this constructor really we're setting up the mesh. There might be some things we want to do that way. But we've got such a simple little setup now. And all of our code nicely extricated from being in one file. So if somebody wants to work on the mover box or someone else is working on the renderer, you're going to get less conflicts. So there's an awful lot of information in there. It's a huge topic. I've run through it. But do try and think about it. If you haven't used it before, try it out. I found it a little bit strange at first. And finding the right this to be talking about can be difficult. But do keep at it. It makes your life so much easier in the long run. And thanks as always to Eddie for the brilliant suggestion. Cool. See you another time. Thanks, everybody.